Hey y'all, welcome back to this week's episode of AMA Friday with Amy Miller, recruiting in yoga pants. So this is gonna be the first in a three-part series about recruiter accountability. I tried to do this in a single video. It was like a half an hour long, y'all. <laughs> So I decided we're gonna we're gonna make this over the next three weeks. So today, next week, and the week after, you're gonna get three videos on this topic. And I'm digging into who holds recruiters accountable. Who are we responsible to? Who do we owe updates? Who do we owe, uh, you know, a certain level of service? You name it. We're gonna dig into it. In no particular order, we are going to talk about candidates. We're going to talk about hiring managers and we're going to talk about recruiting managers. All right. So this week we're going to start with candidates. I'm going to grab the whiteboard just because, you know, this is a serious topic. <laughs> you know, when, when I buzz out the whiteboard, you know, shit's serious, right? <laughs> Still my favorite comment. Okay. So accountability to candidates. What does that look like? So I want to, first of all, remind us that a candidate is someone that I have engaged with, okay? Applicants are not necessarily candidates and candidates may not have yet applied. So there can be some subtle differences between the two. I do have a video on that I will link to up above. So applicants versus candidates kind of help set the groundwork for that a little bit, but let's, let's talk candidates, right? So this is a candidate who's engaged with us. We've, we've maybe had that initial recruiting call. Maybe you've gone through the full interview process and you're waiting for an outcome or you're somewhere in between, but a candidate is someone that I have engaged with and that I owe a response and or possibly closure to. Okay. So that is the number one thing that I owe you really is communication right? We'll just call it that. We'll call it communication. And again, this is that, you know, that, that update, whether or not your application is still being considered, that is delivering you an offer or delivering you a, you know, no decision, if that's what it is, post-interview and anything in between. So what are the mechanisms that exist to hold this, you know, accountability? Um, I would say there's, there's a few things like, obviously there's the, the obvious one, is my ATS. <laughs> so if somebody can create a feature and this may exist, actually, I, I know actually I did, this does, I, I have used one that had kind of a reminder, but I like those reminders. I need those dings. I need like those, you know, those nudges like, Hey, it's been two days. You owe this person an update or whatever. That's really, really helpful for me. So an ATS that syncs with Outlook or has some kind of a mechanism to send me an email or flash something on my screen, things like that. I'm all about it because I, I I need the I usually I usually just like write things down <laughs> and then I have like this ridiculous to-do list and you know sticky notes all over and it, yeah it's a little little crazy. Um so that's one mechanism. I also want um you know candidates to we'll call this contact information. I give every candidate I interact with my personal cell phone number. Like it's actually in my prep email when I do my interview prep with you and then I send you all this stuff we talked about and you know, extra links, documentations or whatever. My cell phone number's in that email. So if you're one of my active candidates and you don't have my number, go check. <laughs> Because you probably do. Now, the downside of that, this is why I have 70 unread text messages and probably 57 unheard or unread, because I don't listen to voicemail, unread voicemails. You know, thank you, T-Mobile, for, you know, transcribing it for me. Um, so I can get behind, right? But again, this is another mechanism where I encourage my candidates, please don't feel like you're bothering me. You deserve closure. You deserve an update. Contact me however you need to phone, email, text, carrier pigeon, please don't send anyone to my house, that's creepy. But you, you see what I'm saying? So again, this is me being very, very vocally self-critical that um, I'm gonna screw up, I'm gonna make mistakes, I'm gonna drop balls, but I want you to feel empowered to contact me through whatever means necessary because you deserve better communication, okay? Um, I think also, I mean, aside from communication, 
let's call can you tell I just like do these on the fly I don't really plan these out I just hit record and start talking is that working for us <laughs> um clarity I think clarity is a big one I try really hard to um, make sure that folks know exactly what their status is it's interesting especially working you know it's working for a big company but then also like working for a really unique business group within a big company is so interesting because there's not always an immediate opportunity to kind of pivot to a different role or share with a new team larger companies sometimes we have that option where hey you know you're a great software engineer not exactly right for this role but there's like 17 other teams that maybe we could fit you into those are wonderful i like to have those conversations too and so I try to identify those opportunities whenever I can for my candidates, if, if that's possible. I do some pretty niche stuff, so it's a little harder. But I wanna make sure that you're clear on what that might look like. And so again, that also goes back to the communication because if I've said, you know, hey, let's keep in touch. Let me know if you see something that lights you up. You know, we could definitely move in this direction or that direction. Hold me accountable to that, right? Like there's, there's nothing, I wouldn't be mad. I said that. I kind of invited you <laughs> to keep that conversation going with me. So I owe you that, right? If you're my candidate. Okay, so that's that part. As far as like kind of more internally facing tools, again, just to, just to kind of close on that part of it, you know, yeah, the ATS, as I said, the reminders, the, the nudges, the outlook, whatever, um, making sure candidates can proactively reach out to me as well. But there's also um, surveys right? I love a good, did I spell that right? Surveys. Okay. Um, I love a good customer survey. And several of the companies I've worked for have a post, oops, a post recruiting survey. So a certain amount of time has passed, you know, we've closed you out in the system. There's like some triggers, you know, some, some steps that happen in the ATS that creates this work stream that sends you an email and you, it might be like, um, you know, rate this person on a scale of one to five in these categories. It might be a free form field, you know, tell us about your experience with Amy Miller, uh, whatever. So, you know, a lot of companies will send something like this and a lot of candidates don't fill it out. And that's fine. Some do. <laughs> I, I've definitely found over the years that people who had a very highly emotional experience tend to respond. That can be a very positive experience. Like Amy made me the best offer I've ever seen. I was treated, you know, like royalty from start to finish. I loved every single person I met through the process. It was all wonderful, great results, right? I get a good survey from those folks. On the other hand, you have people who had a different experience or reacted differently sometimes to the very same process. Go figure. And they have not nice things to say. I get it. Okay, there's definitely times where I have read those surveys and especially like the free form, you know, paragraphs and whatnot and gone, well, they didn't lie. <laughs> and it sucks, right? Because I, I do make mistakes. I do drop balls. I do mess up. And this is accountability. I deserve that. I, you were right. You definitely we're well within your rights to send that to my boss and my boss's boss because <laughs> that's where it goes right this, this is read by leadership and so what happens then is my boss will call me up and hey got this survey let's talk about it because you know i get them too so i'm, I'm like preparing you know well, they're gonna call me any minute now <laughs> Uh, but no, and we do talk through it and we do, you know, kind of look at the data and, you know, was there truly a mistake? Was this just somebody who's ink? Because we get those two, you know, like, look, we did everything we were supposed to. We followed the process. We were as kind as we could be. They're still not happy. We get those. We get those. I ain't mad at you. Get it off your chest. That's fine. But we do look at the facts and the data and the details to make sure that, hey, if we really did screw up, is there something we need to do differently? Is there something uh, we need to change 
and we will take the appropriate action. Okay, so that's that's another form of accountability. So as a job seeker, if you have an opportunity to follow up with someone, whether that's a formal survey type of uh, process or even just a quick email, like, hey, you know, hey, scheduler, I don't know if this is gonna go anywhere, but I just wanna let you know, I did not have the best experience with recruiter or vice versa or whatever. So, you know, if you feel like you wanna kind of get that off your chest or you need to share some of those things, as a recruiter, I would welcome it because I think it's valuable data, right? Um, speaking of data, data points, trends. This is another thing that we are going to look at internally. If I'm a manager, and I've been a manager in the past, so I, I've had to have these conversations, but if I am, you know, one of my people is getting like consistent negative feedback and we start recognizing that there's a trend here, I want to talk to my team member about that. You know, is it a workload issue? Do you just have too much going on that you can't do the follow-up you need to do? Is it, you know, a process issue? Is, is it a time management issue? Like I want to, it's not about, you know, berating that person or, or beating them over the head with these bad surveys. It's about uncovering what's causing it. So really digging into the, the why and fixing it. I want to support my people. I want my recruiters to feel empowered and, and supported. And if we need to make adjustments, if we need training, if we need process, if we need better tools, if we need something, let's have those conversations. Let's make it happen because ultimately we want that accountability to our candidates, which is so important. We want to get that right. So hope that helps y'all. That is number one in our three week, uh, little three part series here about recruiter accountability. Let me know down below if you have any questions about that. There's a, so much more we could talk about when it comes to this topic, but you know, we're at time. <laughs> so next week, come back. We're going to talk about hiring manager accountability. I'll see you then.